What's going on everybody? Who doesn't love scheduling periodic tasks in Linux, right? Good old cron. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you why you might wanna check out systemd timers as an alternative to old fashioned cron jobs, um, some of the advantages and the power that that gives you. And we're gonna do that by kind of jumping in and I'll show you how to port an old style, simple cron job to using systemd and leveraging the timer unit file type. This video has been sponsored by interviewing.io. A huge thank you to them. Check them out in the description below. So if you're working on Linux systems every day, you know that cron has some warts, um, especially just on, on modern systems, you're not always sure which cron implementation you're gonna get. Is it Anacron? Is it Fcron? Is it Jobber? Is it something else? Maybe it's time to consider a new way. Um, most modern systems that you're running, like for businesses out there, are gonna have systemd on them. And systemd timers are an amazing thing you can leverage to kind of replace your, your repository of cron scripts or just start writing new uh, periodic tasks. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of run it in two stages, let's say. The first is I'm gonna show you a very, very simple cron job, just how the traditional implementation is. And the second is I'm gonna show you how to split that into two systemd unit files, uh, one of which is just a service, the other of which is a timer, which are sort of the analogous implementation. And as I show you that kind of practical thing, like all the files you gotta make, all the stuff you gotta paste in there, I want you to kind of keep in mind the advantages, if you know anything about systemd units, that you would have doing this in systemd. That said, without further ado, let's jump in and I will show you old cron job, new systemd thing, and some fun features uh, and kind of like freebies that you get with that, including things like logging. Quick note, if you wanna follow along, I have a public repo, uh, link is in the description that you can just follow along with uh, to kind of take you through the entire video and everything I'm doing, you can just copy and paste right out of there. So first, let's see what our kind of analogous cron tab implementation uh, would be of a very, very simple periodic task that we wanna run. If you're familiar with cron at all, it's gonna be something like this. Now there's a lot of different crons that you can use. Um, some of the syntax is different depending on, you know, Etsy cron tab is gonna be different from this syntax. It might have a user field as well, but by and large, this is the kind of format you're looking at. Here is the kind of timing information. And so that is minute, hour, day of the month, month of the year, day of the week, if you wanna specify those. And you can get fancy with these. Then you have the command that you wanna um, use. And you can see that in our case, we are running a script and uh, we're actually redirecting output to a log file. This is kind of a, what you'll see a lot, right? It's this classic, like, oh, just package it all up into like one invocation of bash or um, shell dash C or whatever. Um, and that's kind of everything. That's the command, it's the error handling, it's the input and output, well, output redirection. Um, and on and on. So this is kind of what we're replacing. Why don't we just look at what this is doing right now? Let's tail the um, the log that we've specified there. And you can see it's just a single file in temp. We specified it in the cron um, task. And you can see that it's just been dutifully, uh, dutifully running for a few minutes. Okay, so this is kind of the thing we're gonna try to replace with systemd timers. It's obviously sort of the simplest use of this. First, let's just take a very quick look at the actual shell script that's that's doing this, right? So this is like our example task or thing that we're running. It can be any binary, any executable. So it's just a little bash script that echoes out. I just ran on and then the date gets interpolated in there. I've got that here for you if you wanna copy and paste it in there, just make it executable and then you're ready to go. So systemd splits this into two kind of separate um, ideas. It takes the timing information, which is that thing that you saw in the cron tab, you know, this stuff, and it takes that into one file and that's your timer file. So it's a timer unit, it's a unit type in, in systemd. And then it takes this command as this sort of action you wanna take, the service, and that would usually be a service uh, type unit file. So you have two unit files um, that this creates. This whole logging bit 
more or less becomes unnecessary because almost, I mean, that's either defined in the unit file or by default, it's just gonna go into the systemd journal. So you just don't have to worry about it. And you'll see how we look at logs from one of these um, systemd timer invoked t uh, units, or in this case, a uh, little task in a second. So that first part is the, the service unit file. This is kind of the, the command. So just run these commands and we will go ahead and create that file. All it is is a simple unit file. Um, type isn't defined, so it's a simple service. Um, I give it a one line description and essentially just link to this, this file, um, this binary that already exists that you just saw. I'm gonna paste that in there. Cool, that exists. And now the second part of this is the timer, right? So this is like when this service file actually gets invoked. Um, and we create that again with uh, a unit and the type is not a service, it is a timer. So start immediately at boot. You could put a delay in here if you wanted. And this calendar parameter is the interesting thing. This is where your timing information now lives. And this is the unit it's gonna start. And that's the unit we just defined here, right? It's tutorialinux.service, that's what it's called. Well, here's the unit we're gonna start uh, or activate uh, with this systemd timer. Cool. I just wanna give a quick thank you to interviewing.io for sponsoring this video. You might pick this up from my videos and especially my interviews with friends, but the top tier tech companies are paying honestly insane salaries for software engineers right now. The problem is that their interviews are often difficult and even great developers can fail because they don't know what to expect or how they should prepare. At interviewing.io, you can practice realistic coding interviews with senior engineers from those top tier companies that you're trying to get into. They'll not only give you mock interviews that train you for the real thing, but you'll also get detailed feedback on exactly what you need to work on to improve your chances. They've got the largest network of vetted and experienced tech interviewers in the world, so you can book an interview with as little as 24 hours notice. And here's the crazy part, which is why I'm talking about it here. You don't have to pay until you're hired. Yeah, so they're not just making money by selling you a dream. The only way they get paid is if you get paid. So if you want to get hired at top tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon, click the link in the description below and have a look. There's a ton of recorded interviews for you to stream, so you can see how it works right now. So one of the really cool things you can do with systemd analyze, in addition to all the other cool things that you can do with it, like analyzing your unit, you know, dependencies, startup order, uh, that kind of thing, activation order, uh, it has this calendar sub command. And what you can do with that is I just pasted in the, um, the, the kind of timing information that I use in my timer unit that you just saw me make. This is going to tell us when that would be triggered next. So if you've ever developed a bunch of cron tab tasks, I know that you have sat there and like redirect the output to some like test file temporarily while you build your command, while you build the timing and just test it to make sure your timing works and kind of happens when you think it will. This is a really nice tool that can help you without having to manually test or wait or really do anything. Okay, now that we have created new uh, systemd unit files, as always, we do a daemon reload and uh, that makes sure that systemd recognizes that, hey, like something's changed, I gotta reread my configuration files. Once we've done that, we can start the timer. Now, I'm not gonna enable this because this is not some beautiful service that I need running after every reboot, but you'll now see that if we um, run a status on tutorialinux.timer, we'll see that it is active, it's waiting, and if we simply, it's gonna trigger this. So if we check uh, maybe with a journal CTL FU, my favorite command ever to follow the uh, output of the tutorial Linux service, then you can see the output of each run here. And now you can see we, we don't, you know, we don't need this date interpolation because we have an actual logging system handling the logging for us. So it, it automatically has a, you know, a time column here. So you can see how this makes things a lot easier. And we've done it really with just two very small uh, unit files. The first is the actual thing we wanna do. This is analogous to the part of the cron tab line where we're kicking off this, uh, this binary. 
And the second is the timer unit file, which is kind of the exciting new thing that I'm showing you in this video, and that simply controls the timing and what gets triggered. So I hope seeing that practical kind of conversion process from how you know how to think in cron to this new way of thinking with systemd units and specifically the systemd timer uh, and service file combination uh, is useful. And I, I hope that you can start to see some of the really powerful things that you can do with that, right? Um, sure, like logging is free, so you're not writing your own like logging output on, on cron jobs. But we, we've all seen cron commands that just get longer and longer and longer specifically for things like, for things that kind of come for free with systemd units, right? Like um, on failure, what do you do if there's an error? Well, like you do a lot of input and output redirecting in, in a cron like command, you know, it gets, there's a lot of ways to do it. None of them are clean. They're all pretty dirty and we've all done them or seen them done. Um, and kind of hooking into the dependency and service and system management thing that systemd is for better or worse, uh, lets you leverage a lot of that power without having to write it for every single F and cron job you, you write. Yes, that includes logging. Yes, that includes much, much more fine-grained control over when triggering happens of your uh, your timer and the service that it, that it starts. Uh, things like someone unplugged something on the machine, like hardware events, right? You can respond to those. Uh, services coming up, going down, entering different states uh, in the systemd parlance. Uh, you can react to that with cron jobs now. Um, delays are easy to do. Um, you just get so much power for free. Environment files, right? Um, or environment variables being passed. You can do it cleanly now. There's kind of endless advantages to this and I really recommend that you try it. It's been very useful for me. I'd like to extend another huge thank you to interviewing.io for sponsoring this video. Their support's been pretty amazing uh, and the service itself is really cool. So if you, maybe you're looking for a new tech job, specifically a programming job, um, now is a great time because companies are paying just ridiculous amounts of money uh, to people like us who can program. Um, but if, like me, you are terrified of uh, programming interviews, I get a ton of anxiety around them every time, um, interviewing.io can be really helpful with that. Check them out in the description. You're basically sitting or Zooming, I guess, with people who are doing the types of interviews at the companies that you're applying to. They're kind of coaching you through them so that when it actually happens, you're not stressed out and surprised, you know what to expect and you've practiced those types of problems before. Um, it's a pretty cool service and uh, they don't get paid until you get paid. So there like, just isn't a downside. Appreciate everyone's time. Like and subscribe if this stuff has been helpful. Check out my previous SystemD videos um, if you're new to kind of SystemD in general and uh, be good to each other out there. Peace.